You think this is big news? You have no idea. Do I have some tea for you? And I gotta say, that Kevin Feige, he's been quiet for too long. But when he, he starts to activate, you really can see that he's playing at a different level than everybody else. It's interesting because, uh, just a little sidebar here, the DCEU has really invested in this multiverse idea, that they're going to just have all these different versions of the same characters and let their talent explore the paths that the talent wants to explore, which is interesting, particularly when you get a Joker or the Batman, or, you know, there are a lot, there are a lot of bright spots in the DCEU. However, part of what I think makes the MCU so successful is seeing Kevin Feige and being able to speculate about Kevin Feige putting together this amazing puzzle. And this video, as you're about to see, is a perfect example of that. All right, so Peyton Reed, ah, that bastard. It looks like he might get his hands on the Fantastic Four after all. You know what I always tell you? The squeaky wheel gets the grease. Because yes, after, after delivering not just one, but two subpar Ant-Man movies, it's criminal how good the Ant-Man and Wasp trailers were, but yet how underwhelming the actual movie was. And those are two of the lowest grossing movies in the MCU as well. And that was despite, by the way, having an amazing cast to work with, really strong cast. And Reed, who, by the way, Disney just tried to, you know, is just trying to solidify his career by having him direct an episode of The Mandalorian for season two, somehow, after two failures, or at least two meh, he gets his contract renewed for Ant-Man 3, and then he promises everybody he's going to over-deliver. Now, understandably, we were skeptical of that promise. But now, we can see that Kevin Feige is giving Reed so many t wonderful toys to play with that even Peyton Reed couldn't mess it up because that the casting of Jonathan Majors as Kang the Conqueror, uh, you know, it hasn't been totally confirmed he's playing Kang the Conqueror, but I'm gonna point out to you why I think that he's like, I think that's why there's a bit of an asterisk on that. You know, the, the, the report from um, Deadline says that sources say he's going to be Kang the Conqueror or maybe like kind of Kang the Conqueror. And I'm gonna explain to you why I think that might be the case. Uh, but anyway, several rumors about Ant-Man 3 begin to come into focus. Let's discuss. So I've heard from my sources that Marvel has written two scripts for Ant-Man 3, and this gives you a picture as to how franchises are developed, because, you know, we were just talking, we've all been talking about Star Wars not knowing who the heck Ray's parents are. But for Ant-Man 3, Kevin Feige had two scripts written, one draft that introduces the Young Avengers, and another draft that introduces the Fantastic Four. Oh boy, you can already see this is exciting. Kang the Conqueror is of course connected to both of those groups of characters, and Marvel therefore could have either picked one of those drafts or maybe decided to do some sort of combination. Now, the Ant-Man cast lines up very nicely with both uh, Young Avengers and Fantastic Four, just as Kang the Conqueror does. Cassie Lang, of course, has now been aged up after the blip and is the right age to become stature, following in her dad's tiny and big footsteps as a founding member of the Young Avengers. Uh, I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm worried about moving on too quickly from uh, Paul Rudd in the role, and uh, Evangeline Lilly has not gotten to really stretch her wings at all. Um, that's a slight concern that I have, but this is so exciting, I'll get over it. All right, so anyway, then there's also Hank Pym, who not only can connect to Reed Richards, but also Kang the Conqueror. Now in the comics, Kang the Conqueror is actually Nathaniel Richards, who is a descendant of Reed Richards all the way in the 31st century and becomes a time traveling villain. Uh, it's a little bit like um, the, Leg the Legion uh, of superheroes, uh, uh, I'm blanking on the name, in DC. So, you know, DC, the, the, you know, uh, Marvel is just racing so quickly that, you know, and we're going to talk about some other things that, you know, they're kind of stepping on DC's toes here, that it's also frustrating to that in that respect as well. Uh, but anyway, uh, Kang the Conqueror, Nathaniel Richards, 31st century becomes a time traveling villain, so therefore can show up and menace our current characters. So because he travels through time, there are actually multiple versions of Kang throughout time, which is really cool for Jonathan Majors. I'm so excited for him. And one of those uh, versions of Kang becomes Iron Lad, who comes up with the idea for the Young Avengers, and in the comics not only recruits Cassie, but falls in love with Cassie Lang. Now, obviously, Jonathan Majors is too old for Emma Furman. They could cast a younger actor to play a younger version of Kang, because it is a younger version of Kang in the comics as well. But, you know, Kevin Feige doesn't have to follow the comics to the letter, which he's proven to be the case already. So Reed Richards also, by the so and that, there won't necessarily be a romance, um, 
And Iron Lad won't necessarily even be in the Young Avengers because Cassie Lang already creates that connection. Uh, and also that means Reed Richards won't necessarily be Ray spent. There are other ways you could introduce Kang, which I'm going to go over in just a moment. But the point is, Kang is a focal point when it comes to both the Fantastic Four and Young Avengers. And also you're noticing an overall science theme. It used to be the science bros, but you know, one of them's dead, the other one can't star in his own franchise of movies because of Universal. So that, that now falls to the Ant-Man um, uh, movies, which is a great use for them. And you know, it took, it took them three movies, you know, it took Thor three movies to find its mojo. So I think it's fine. Although it did do it with a new director. I'm just saying. All right, so anyway. Uh, anyway, Kang is not always a villain. Think more of a Loki Magneto anti-hero type of character. And by the way, in the comics, Kang sometimes looks so cool. I don't think they're gonna make Jonathan Majors wear that blue face paint and stuff. We can't keep having characters, you know, actors of color have to paint themselves to be in these movies. That's not, that's not gonna be good. Uh, but he has a lot of cool floating devices. He's always flying and floating through the air. I love every time I see Magneto do it, be it Ian McKellen or Michael Fassbender, and I'm excited to see Jonathan Majors do it as well. He's gonna look so cool, I can't wait. And by Ray spending the character and putting him with all these super scientists, playing up the scientific aspects of Kang, the MCU beats, and also, do they need a, a, a Doctor Doom? Although I have to say, Kevin Feige, such a purist, Doctor Doom will show up. And Kang, because Kang is supposed to base a lot of his own stuff on Doom as well. Um, Yin and, the yin, yin and yang of the Fantastic Four area, Doom and Reed Richards. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, conceivably, Kang could take the place for Dr. Doom if they wanted him to. I don't know. We'll see. It's an interesting idea. But the MCU beats the DCEU to the punch on Mr. Terrific, who just showed up in the comics again, very strong in the new Strange Adventures. Fantastic art. And, you know, some people have said they'd like to see Jonathan Majors play that role. Too late. Too slow, DC. Marvel got him. Now, speaking of fan casting, this also crosses over with Marvel's own Blue Marvel character from the comics, who fans had also said they'd like to see show up and that maybe Jonathan Majors could play that character. Because Feige, Blue Marvel is a real fringe character. He's a super scientist character, but you know, I don't know if there's a place for him like there is for Kang. So he doesn't have to be, Kang the Conqueror doesn't have to be Nathaniel Richards. He could be Adam Brashear, a Blue Marvel's alter uh, identity, his, you know, his true name. And you would just make, that that's what you would do. And I think that to me makes a little bit more sense. I like that actually quite a bit. And that would, uh, that would mean, that's why Deadline said it's not specifically Kang the Conqueror, because it's not Nathaniel Richards, it's uh, maybe some other character, maybe Adam Brashear, taking, taking that over. I think that would be a good way to go, quite frankly. All major movie franchises, as we've been seeing in the news lately, need to really work on their diversity. Not only having characters of color, but giving them good stuff to do. Uh, Marvel, of course, was just dealt a tragic blow by the death of Chadwick Boseman. Uh, and I think that bringing Jonathan Majors in is a quick, strong, and respectful fix to that situation. Because, you know, I know uh, Shuri, as I've, telling, as I've told you, is taking over the Black Panther mantle. Um, I'm hearing that from my sources. It was always the plan for her. You know, I told you in my video that I thought M'Baku could be leveled up to do, make a two-hander, but Shuri will be the Black Panther. Some of you were upset that there would be a lack of a strong black male character in the MCU. And now you have Jonathan Majors, who I think definitely um, will assuage any of those concerns. I've been praising Jonathan Majors since I first saw him back in his debut role in Hostiles in 2017. It's a small supporting role, but he has a killer scene where he made me cry. He's so talented. His star turn, of course, in Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country. Wow. And obviously put him at the top of every studio's wish list. I said that when I saw the first episode, and although anyone would predict that seeing that first episode, he was just phenomenal. So, so talented. He also shined into Five Bloods. I feel a little bad for Jer uh, for uh, Jerdy Smollett, because you know, while she's a very good uh, black canary, I, I thought she was I actually came across one of one of the best performances in Birds of Prey. That movie was a failure, so she's already stuck. She's already been. She already has a comic book character, and so while Jonathan Majors has been able to use Lovecraft Country as a springboard, you know, Jerdy Smollett's a little bit stuck, at least when it comes to comic book franchises. I hope she gets something else off of it uh, as well. So anyway, I don't know, as I said, where there's room for Ant-Man and Friends if you're going to be introducing the Young Avengers and the Fantastic Four in the movie. It could just be one or the other, but I, I don't think you couldn't have a Reed Richards tease in this situation. I think they're going to go with Young Avengers because we'll talk about it in a moment. The Young Avengers are coming and they're coming fast. So I think they're going to go Young Avengers. 
but I think there's going to be a Fantastic Four nod for sure. It's just too easy and too cool. I hope Peyton Reed and company do a better job introducing these iconic characters, though, than how they did introducing other characters of color, by the way. There's more fodder for the criticism that's, uh, I think, correctly at leveled at these franchises. But Reed did a horrible job introducing Goliath and Ghost, who were totally wasted at Ant-Man and the Wasp, and it seems won't be back for Ant-Man 3. They're just gone. But at least Kevin Foggy, we know, has big plans for the Fantastic Four and also Young Avengers. So those, those, they won't just disappear. I mean, the Young Avengers are already popping up like daisies across the MCU, as I've been reporting to you for some time now. Stature, already here. Miss America, set to debut in Doctor Strange 2. Hulkling could debut via the Captain Marvel Secret Invasion storyline. Uh, Wiccan and Speed are debuting in WandaVision. Kate Bishop is coming to Disney Plus in the Hawkeye series. Speaking of Disney Plus, Patriot could show up in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Kid Loki in the Loki series. I've in fact heard rumors of that. Uh, you know, from my sources, they've they've heard uh, murm uh, I can't confirm it, but it's in the mix. And now. Iron Lad is also in play. I don't know if they even need to do Iron Lad, as I said, but I think I don't. Uh, I think that it's there's a strong hook with Kang. We'll see what they decide to do. So, what do you think? Do you think that Ant Man Three is too crowded? I mean, it could be a Civil War level movie, and with all these cool new characters being introduced, who cares? It's going to be awesome. And do you think Peyton Reed can pull this off? I say that they're such great characters, he couldn't possibly mess it up. But you would think, how could you mess up Goliath and Ghost? And yet. Here we are. I even thought Michelle Pfeiffer was wasted in Ant-Man 2. It was annoying. I'm really a little concerned, but we'll see. At least these characters will go on to live elsewhere, uh, as the way Black Panther himself was introduced in Civil War. I'm just happy for Paul Rudd and Evangeline Lilly to be in the stars of such a major film. They deserve better than what they've been getting in their solo movies. And please, stop making the Wasp a wet blanket. She should be fun and exciting and cool. Uh, I, 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 Evangeline Lilly looks so, is so great in the role. I, I really want to see her, you know, stop being annoying. <laughs> All right, so anyway, uh, I'm also very happy for Jonathan Majors, a fantastic talent. All right, share your thoughts down below, subscribe today, and of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.